Hi! If you like tales of trauma and terror and triumph, then this is the story of the time I tried to paint a rug. Do you want to hear the update about my rug? Are you so excited to share with the people? Great. You guys know that here on Laugh Cry DIY, we don't just do DIYs. We do DIYs and we keep it freaking real. And today I'm giving you guys the long awaited update to tell you about the status of the rug that I painted. So let's rewind to about five months ago. I have been on an epic journey to find the right rug for my living room. It has been a journey, a challenge. It has made me doubt my own capabilities and reality because for some reason, no matter how hard I looked, I just couldn't find the perfect rug. And this is the case a lot of times for me and textiles, especially rugs. They can be very challenging. You need a specific dimension. Uh, shopping online is really hard because the colors often look nothing like the real colors in real life. I'm very sensitive to texture and pattern and it's a whole thing. And therefore I think up to this point, I have bought, sold and resold maybe six rugs in this space. But finally one day I realized that my maximalist dream was to have a peacock rug. Now the peacock rug of my dreams did not exist in reality, so I had to settle for the closest one I could find, which was this cool 4x6 rug. I love the peacock. I love the pattern. I hated the gray background. And as I said in my last video, this rug makes everyone unhappy because if you like neutrals, you hate the peacock, and if you like colorful maximalism, you hate the gray. So the only thing I could think to do to hack this into something I could live with was to paint a pattern onto the gray. And if you saw that video, which is linked below, that's exactly what we did. We got some fabric softener, we got some water, we got three colors, and I painted this sunset pattern onto the rug. And I was very happy with it, and it worked in the beginning. Here is what that rug looks like today. It's not present. And that is because if there's one thing we love on Laugh Cry DIY, it is a, sing it with me, moment of hell. So as you may recall in the final shots of that video, the rug was fine. She was beautiful and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. But there ended up being a few problems with the rug. Number one, when the paint dried, I saw that the top was dry and I didn't realize until like two days later that all of the fabric softener and water I had used in that project, which is what you need to use if you're gonna paint fabric, had sunk to the bottom and it had soaked the pad rug on the bottom. I didn't notice this until I went to move it two days later. And when I did, I thought, oh no, we've gotta dry this portion of it out, but we don't have much space, so I threw the rug over a laundry line in the back. Why, God, why did I do this? Because what I didn't realize would happen is that yes, it would dry, but that laundry line would create a terrible crack in a portion of the rug. And when I took it off the line and realized, I started to tell myself lies. Do you remember that? Look, she's looking away. She can't even bear this part of the story. So I brought the rug in and I thought maybe it just needs to heal, right? Maybe over time with wear and use, maybe the fibers will relax and the paint will unseal and this crack will be gone. Spoiler, it never left. Problem number two, I was kind of impatient when I took on this project. I ran out of fabric softener. I was kind of just watering down the paint towards the end. And because of that, uh, although the rug was kind of a lower pile, it wasn't the lowest pile. And so the paint kind of only saturated down probably about halfway. It's synthetic fibers. So I think the lack of fabric softener didn't help like soften the fibers so they could absorb everything. So what that meant is that as I started to walk over that portion, um, some of the gray part of the fibers was like starting to come up or it was kind of like spreading. And so you could see more gray and or the little fuzzies were kind of coming up. And I just cannot stand the gray showing through. Problem number three, I painted the sunset pattern because it was like the easiest, most foolproof pattern to paint. But the kind of bright oranges, yellows were beautiful, but I did feel like they kind of clashed with my like bronze gold coffee table. So all in all, I lived with the rug for a few months and I prayed that that crack would heal itself. And I vacuumed up the little gray fibers. And then one day in a fit of rage, I decided I cannot live this life anymore. But that peacock was so perfect and there was no rug on the internet that had a peacock 
design that I liked as much. And I just kept thinking, God, I wish I could just like have the peacock alone and use that somehow. And then I thought more and I was like, you know, there are kind of two things I really love in the rug world. One, I love tufted rugs. I like when a portion of the rug like pops out a little bit more. And in some ways that was a little bit of the effect of this rug because the peacock itself is a softer texture than the rest of the gray area. Number two, I really love the look of layering rugs. This is a little less common practice, but it can be so effective it's really cool, it's really funky, and it can add a cool like dimension and texture. So by this point I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could at least save the peacock and maybe layer it over another rug? I knew it was bold, I knew it was risky, but to be honest, by the time this thought occurred to me, I had already been in a fit of rage and I had already entirely cut the peacock out. So the new plan was to officially use this as a throw rug over another rug. Can you face the camera at least? Even if you're annoyed? Please, we have company. So I know what you're thinking, Katie, isn't this whole thing gonna like fray and fall apart because you're crazy and you just cut out a rug with no regard for your life? Yes, but you know I'm a cheap whore with a heart of gold and I thought I actually might have a solution that would prevent this from happening, which is so glue liquid and a paintbrush. So yeah, I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna pat this glue all the way around the little edges, anywhere where there might be fraying and I presume that it's gonna just absorb and kind of seal it to the padding below. And that is what we call a desperate woman doing a desperate action. But guess what guys? Until today, I have actually been living with this uncut rug and it shockingly has not frayed as much as you would think. Now, while I do this and while this little bum sleeps, do you have anything to say to the people? Let's talk about the challenge of layering rugs. Here's the big thing. So you either need them to be like contrast or like incredibly complimentary. Layering rugs is a great hack when like, sometimes maybe you can't afford the like nine by 12 rug, but you could afford like the six by eight. It's a great hack. You put a base rug underneath and then put your like really beautiful decorative one above it. So I knew I was gonna layer this rug over something, but then came the challenge of finding that exact rug. Number one. I have a coral pink couch that if you guys haven't seen, um, I will link the video below. I custom dyed my couch cover in my bathtub. I created the dream bright, bold pink couch of my dreams, but it's a very difficult color to work with. I really wanted the peacock, which I shall now call Peter. Um, I really wanted Peter to pop. And so I needed a color underneath that would be like high contrast. Oh dear God. Wah. I also knew it couldn't be too patterned because it would clash. I also knew it couldn't not be patterned because it would look kind of weird to have a solid color. And then this guy overlaid, it would just be too obvious that it was like not the same. And most importantly, I really needed it to be four by six. And let me just say to all you rug sellers out there, when a girl needs a four by six rug and y'all are producing three foot nine inch rugs by four foot 11 or five foot 11, it is really ruining my life. So I knew the dimensions like needed to be exact. Also, because of the placement, I really wanted Petey here to lie underneath my coffee table. Now in a dream world, Petey would actually kind of be a totally free cut peacock and he would be able to kind of be thrown and positioned anywhere. But unfortunately, he does have a very harsh, very aggressive bottom right angle. So he really needed to sit in the corner of whatever rug I chose. All that to say, I really needed the rug to be four by six. But as we know with rugs, it's so hard to find the color, the texture, the pattern, and the size, because how many times have you found a rug you love and it's too big or too small? But there was something that I kind of did want to introduce to the space, and that is a kind of sort of like distressed or vintage looking like Persian or Oriental rug. When I am designing my space and I can't decide, I usually am mocking stuff up in Photoshop, or at least like using a background remover and kind of putting things side by side in a mood board. That way you can like really see if it's gonna work, especially with this damn couch. Okay, good news is that that glue dries pretty quickly. Um, it does kind of smell, but what are you gonna do? So I'm just gonna like do a quick trimming of the edges to clean them up. So I'm gonna let this dry and reveal the rug that I did choose. So probably the camera colors might be a little off, but 
I actually shockingly went with a pink rug, which is the last thing I thought I would do. And I actually wanted something that was almost like a neutral or my version of a neutral. Most importantly, she has a lot of subtle pops of blue, which beautifully complements Petey, but doesn't take away. And I was so nervous when she came in that the pink tones would conflict, but fortunately they totally worked. And now that we have this beautiful base foundation, Petey can finally get his place in the spotlight. I know on camera, I think this is reading a little bit more lavender, uh, but trust me, it works. We have like glued the edges, so the fraying should be minimal. I'm so happy I got to save Petey and free him from the tragedies he's been through. And I will give you a few tips if you yourself want to layer a rug. Number one, uh, if you're gonna layer one over the other, try like two different textures. I knew that I needed a very low pile rug. This is actually basically a mat. It's kind of like an indoor outdoor mat. It's still soft, but it's incredibly thin and flat. That lets PD really pop. Also, if they're too thick on top of each other, they're really gonna like sink in, and so it's just not quite the vibe. Like I said before, you either wanna make sure that they are very high contrast if you want one to pop more than the other, or that they are very high complementary if you wanna like kind of fake a bigger rug or like make it seem like they're kind of the same set. Now I know some of you might be asking me, Katie, how are you gonna clean this since you like hacked it up and glued it and stuff? I'm not worried about that. I have a local buy nothing Facebook group. I will borrow a little like carpet steamer and we can keep Petey young and fresh as long as he wants to live. Now the real question is, would I paint a rug again? Would I? Would I? Yes, I would. Um, but I would not paint a higher pile rug. I would paint basically if it was a matte rug like this, I would absolutely paint it. Um, I've seen some really cool like spray painted designs on really flat weave rugs. So I'm still pro painting rugs, but we have to admit that sometimes it doesn't always work out the way you want. So the moral of the story is try something new, try something different. If it totally falls apart, then try another thing new and different. I'm also happy that I feel like sometimes you can just like create the thing that doesn't exist. Like I could not find this peacock on a cool pattern like this anyways. I guess my channel is really about um, being delusional, creating your own reality, fighting the system that tells you you can't have the peacock rug of your dreams. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Oh, I have to put my coffee table back. Okay, bye. Oh, if I didn't say this before, make sure that you have a rug pad for sure on the bottom or both because you don't want them slip sliding around on each other or on the floor. Now, obviously because of the height, these are two different um, like levels. So the coffee table is a little bit wonky and all you need to do for that is just fold up a post-it, tuck her underneath where no one will see and you're good. Oh, it's so heavy. By the way, I've been kind of contemplating replacing this glass top with an antique mirrored top. Thoughts? Let me know below. And per usual, thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Thank you for being here for every DIY moment. I'm a little hot and sweaty. My angles are always crazy, and that's very on brand. Okay, I love you, bye.